In 1953, they made an extra episode of The Adventures of Superman that most people have never seen. The United States Treasury must have asked uh, that this very popular show, The Adventures of Superman, do something to get people to help support the Treasury by buying war bonds and stamps. And so they wrote, and we did, Stamp Day for Superman. And it's to encourage kids to really do their best and to care about America and do your part by buying United States savings. This is Stamp Day for Superman. It's a public service announcement by the US Treasury Department. It was financed by the US Treasury Department, so it's not copyrighted, it's in the public domain. Now it's an episode of Superman used as a platform for a, a US Treasury Department endorsed film, if you can call it that. It's running times a normal episode of um, The Adventures of Superman, starring George Reeves. So it's a standalone episode. Um, I'm not sure when it was broadcast, the broadcast dates, or if it was shown in sequence with other episodes when it was originally broadcast. But it's promoting the purchasing of um, United States savings stamps, which I'm assuming are similar to Treasury bonds. I'm not too sure what kind of product they are. They're obviously government-backed, and um, there was obviously a program running for them in schools, as you'll see throughout the review of this uh, this episode. Now. The film starts with uh, Lois Lane and Clark Kent outside a jewellery store, just chatting away, looking at jewellery and stuff, and I think it touches on the whole consumerism thing of um, delayed gratification of saving up for something and buying it and doing what's necessary to save for that um, the item you want to buy. As uh, Lois and Clark are just chatting away, the uh, store's uh, burglar alarm is activated and starts ringing really loud. Clark uh, storms off and does his thing. Um, yeah, become changes into Superman really fast, goes inside the store. And by the time he gets in the store, one of the burglars has already made off with the loot, leaving one of them behind. And we're treated to a very interesting scene, which has a very interesting agenda also. My partner went out the door as soon as the alarm went off. You don't have to worry about me, though. I'm not going to run away. You mean you deliberately stay when you could have gotten away? Well, I, I've never done anything like this before, Superman. I, it was all like a dream until that alarm went off and woke me up. Well, I realized that I can, I can run from the police, but I can't run for myself. It's easy to see that you're new at this sort of thing. Why did you do it? Why? Well, that's what I keep asking myself. Sure, it was the money, but it went deeper than that. I should have learned how to save and handle money a long time ago. Then this wouldn't have happened. Well, I'm sorry it did, but at least you've learned something very important. Well, pretty bad way to learn it, don't you think? Well, here they come, Superman. Gee, I feel a little better for having someone to talk to. Thanks. It's all right, son. Now, you can do me a favor. Don't tell them I was here. Sure. There's a little bit of fear-mongering in this scene. Um, the way it played out, it was, it was almost implying that if you don't save your money and you're not money smart and you don't invest, you could find your finances spiraling out of control and your budget in chaos and you could find yourself actually turning to crime. So that was the undertone of this, uh, this scene. But um, yeah, I, I found it a bit humorous. Look, there is no excuse for committing crime. But the way it was just implying that any person could get that desperate and go and break into a jewelry store if their finances get out of control, it could, you know, it could happen to any one type of scenario. And that's what they were really playing on with this scene. Now, being a typical journalist, Lois goes and writes up an article on the uh, burglary. She then gloats to Clark how while he'd wandered off for help, she went and um, got the story. She nabbed the story and wrote it, got published in the Daily Planet, but this has caught the attention of the burglar who got away. So the burglar who got away, I think his name is Blinky, he contacts Lois and asks Lois to meet up with the uh, intention of surrendering to the police. But this is just a ploy. He intends on uh, using Lois, kidnapping Lois, using Lois as leverage, and then killing her because she's a witness. And have a look at that. Smoking on national television. Our times have changed.
While holding uh, Lois captive, Blinky uh, asks her to teach him how to use the typewriter. And then she starts teaching him how to uh, do tricks with the typewriter. And she uses this as a rouse to uh, type a note and fly it out the window. Quite a funny scene, the way she pulled the wool over his eyes. So here it is. Don't go no further. I like you real close. I was just going to test flight my airplane. You can test flight it from right over there. Anything you say, Blinky. Now look what I did. So you can make another one. Oh, thanks, Blinky. The note finds its way to Clark, and then we're treated to the obvious course of action. He changes into Superman, goes ahead and rescues Lois, apprehends Blinky, and saves the day. And that's it. The episode concludes with an interesting pitch on uh, United States saving stamps and why it's good to invest in them and buy them. Here's those final two scenes. There can only be one Superman, of course. Did you ever think about some of the super things that you can do for yourself? Well, like saving up the money for your own vacation or uh, for that new bike that you wanted so much. Well, all you have to do is just put away part of your allowance or your odd job money and put it in United States saving stamps at school. Those dimes, quarters, and dollars add up mighty fast, especially when you buy them every week on stamp day. Well, the first thing you know, you'll have enough for a savings bond, just like Dad buys for the payroll savings at work. And from then on, the sky's the limit. Take it from Superman. Your mom and dad will be plenty proud of you if you're learning to save regularly. And the teachers are on your team, too. They make sure of having savings stamps at school for you to buy and remind you when it is stamp day. And so, boys and girls, be super citizens and have a super future by saving regularly with United States saving stamps at school. And keep on making me and everyone else as proud of you as we are today. Bye now. Bye. It's good to see you again. All in a day's work, Clark. While you were out covering stamp day, Superman and I were cleaning up a case. It looks like Blinky's going to get jailed. Jess is going to get probation. And I'm going to get my typewriter back. <laughs> Golly, Jim, it's a lucky thing for me you saved your money for that typewriter. Otherwise, I'd never gotten that note out. It turned into a happy ending for everybody. And just to make the ending a little more happy, I have a present for each of us. Cheaper stamp albums. Thank you, Mr. Kent. You have an extra one. Who's that for? just for a friend of mine. And there you have it, Stamp Day for Superman, a real product of its time, a time when America was an industrial superpower. Any investment in government infrastructure would have been very, very well rewarded. Things obviously aren't so prosperous today, and a lot more people are very distrusting of government investments and government bonds and anything government-related. I'd really like to hear from any of you uh, retired baby boomers who lived through this. I find the whole concept of the United States uh, stamp savings program very interesting. And I'd like to know a lot more. I'd like to know um, what sort of percentages they yielded, um, how many years for maturity, could you roll them over. So if you know anyone who's uh, lived through this or anything about, about this program, I'd really love to hear from you. Please post in the comments. What we did have in Australia was the uh, Dolomite Account Program at schools. Most of my Australian viewers will know about this. It was a savings program where you deposited money through the Commonwealth Bank. It was done through your school and the money went to a Commonwealth Bank account for long-term savings. Uh, I didn't partake in this program because my mum banked with the National Australia Bank, but she did put away money aside for me. But keep in mind, this was the 1980s when it was actually worth having money in the bank when you could get returns of 16 or 17%. Now, money in the bank's just simply not worth it. It's You're better off uh, floating it on the share market or buying tangibles like you see here. So I'm sure a lot of silver bugs today would, um, would endorse, say, a coin day for Superman as opposed to stamp day for Superman. As always, thanks so much for tuning in. Leave your thoughts in the comments section and have a great day.